call him Jimmy Richard Wanjigi or JW. Some call him James Bond. The guy has his eyes on the ball, eyes on the prize, eyes on the presidency 2022. Or does he? This morning, I want to examine the place of Jimmy Wanjigi in Kenyan politics as we move towards 2022. Many people have mentioned his name. He has come out in the open, but of course, in his characteristic, mysterious manner, a text or two. So we ask ourselves this question. Is Jimmy Wanjigi a presidential candidate? This is an em not an empty question. In this country, when you offer yourself, people ask questions. They create boxes, so to speak, and you begin to tick those boxes. For some, they never even get to half. That's why they remain wannabes. Others don't even tick one. They are irritants, embarrassing to themselves, close friends, and even family. Let's look at Jimmy Wanjigi. The first question that comes to mind when you want to stand. People ask, you come from a community that brings with it votes because of the nature of our politics, regional based, ethnic based, and therefore you must be coming with a strong community. Jimmy Wanjigi ticks that box. Tuck. He comes from a community that is not just populous, but is the most populous community. Moreover, the Kikuyu are not just populous, they know the sweetness of power. They have tested power, and like the Kalenjin, they know what power is. Actually, sometimes with even numbers not being in their favor, they put up a good show merely on the basis of knowing the sweetness of power. Two, people ask, you want to run for president? You are past Mukisa Kitui, Kalonzom Sioka, wherever you are. Do you have the resources? That box for Jimmy Wanjigi is quickly ticked. He has the box. He's a billionaire. People proceed to ask, do you have friends? Do you have a network of friends? Jimmy Wanjigi has worked with the Luo community, with Rai Laudinga, and therefore that box is quickly ticked. People ask, are you able to mobilize? Jimmy Wanjigi is known to be a strategist. He has been called Mr. Fixit. Indeed, in 2013, he almost single-handedly led a group of gamer people who reversed the, 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 the Huru decision to back Salem Dawadi and hence the source of Madimoni. Mashetani. He worked around the clock to reverse Uhuru's decision and revert the president to Uhuru Kenyatta and William Ruto. So he's a mess of fix it. In 2017, we saw his role of not only bankrolling NASA, but being a strategist. People also ask, especially if you are a Kikuyu candidate and you desire Kikuyu votes, are you a jamba? Are you a man? Kikuyus, perhaps because of their history, because of Mau Mau, they tend to go from people who are rebellious, people who are tough. That's why there are myths about Kenyatta, Jomo Kenyatta with his Bakora and Njora. You know? That's why Matiba, even in his state, God rest his soul, excited the Kikuyus because he was a man, a man who could face Moi, I think he was the first person, I may be wrong, to resign and when he differed with Moi. A tough man like that. Indeed, Kibaki only became president because he was associated with cowardice. Kibaki only became president because of the Tosha moment at Uhuru Park. Otherwise, he had been trying, but that tag, although he was carrying the Kikuyu name, that tag of being a coward, it wasn't quite selling, although they supported him. So Jimmy Wanjigi is a man. He's a tough man. Look at his 
role in the swearing in of the people's president. Look at the defiance. Look at the drama in his, at his posh home in Mudaiga, where even Raila, I think, slept there, where he stood up against his government that wanted to blow off his, 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 his house. So to the Kikuyu, if that is the, the vote he's looking for, he's a jamba. Comparing Jimmy Wanjigu with all these other politicians from the mountain, they pale in comparison. They look like MCS, Sunday school teachers. So you, you can see for Jimmy, all the boxes seem to be ticked. But I'll still ask the question this morning. Will Jimmy Wanjigi run in 2022? My honest answer is I doubt. In fact, he will not run. First of all, other than hinting, he has not come out strongly to say he's running. There's no evidence of even a secretariat. There's no media presence. I know we have a year, but for a person starting, my friend, even as we argue that coalitions and political farm parties have been formed since multipartism, just before elections, even as we argue and go back to 2002 and talk about the rainbow and NAC and go to PNU 2007 and go to TNA and even Jubilee, that these things are formed a month, two, three, four months, about two, three, four months before the election. We must also take cognizance of the fact that those forming those alliances are people who are already in Kenyan politics, which Jimmy has not been, at least not directly. So that presence is not felt. He's not in the media. He's not in regions. And Kenyan politics is organized along ethnicities, along regions. So that, 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 that brings me to doubt that actually he'll be running. But the main reason, the main reason why Jimmy will not be running, according to me, is party. He says he wants to wrestle the party from Raila Odinga. We live in this country and we know parties have their owners. That's why I laugh at people saying they want to kick out the Jubilees, Rafai Tuju and Murade. <laughs> Murade and Tuju are part of the owners. You can't kick them out. I even saw some governor talking about it. Yes, I just laugh. Parties have owners. So I do not see Jimmy Wanjigi, much as he's already organizing, and I've seen him moving around Mount Kenya region, revitalizing ODM. It is never going to be the case that they can allow you. Even if you have the resources to get the delegates, men in black will appear. You will not get that. So what then is the case? That now lands that to the situation in the country. Here is Jimmy Wanjigi, he doesn't have a party, he doesn't seem to be running, and he's powerful. Here is Raila, on the other hand, deserted by his NASA principles, without which he can't win an election against Ruto. Kalonzo Msioka is set to run on his own. I am sorry to announce to him, my friend Kalonzo, you will not get more than 300,000 votes. Dito Mdavadi, who seems to want to run and get 150,000. I can be fair to him and say, 200, 250,000. But the more serious thing about Mdavadi, as it is increasingly becoming clear, he's likely said to join William Samoy Ruto as his deputy. Why do I think Mdavadi seems to be an attractive deputy, deputy to um, uh, Ruto? One, Ruto already has the Mount Kenya vote, as he puts it. So if you have the votes in the bag, why would you go and waste the, the DP position? You use that position to fish among the lawyer you give it to Mdavadi. Secondly, there are so many contenders for number two from the mountain. Will you give it to Muturi from the Mount Kenya East, Kiraitu, Munya, or the other guy, Professor, my friend? Will you give it to Rigadi from Nyeri? Is it Moses Kuria? Is it Alice Wahome? So to avoid that headache, you do what psychologists say, avoidance. You simply skip there and go to and go to, to, to western or another region the other reason why ruto may find the mountain less attractive and therefore double standing a chance is that this is so kikuyu kalenjin kikuyu kalenjin kalenjin kikuyu people are having a problem with it and for ruto that headache will, headache will be solved if he gives this thing to Mdavadi. so you, you can see finally why i think mount kenya may not produce ruto's deputy is Jimmy Wanjigi could stand and run with so many votes. Or the community 
could take their votes to Raila via Jimmy Wanjigi. Or the community could be so fractured. And as Kiambu has now shown, Kiamba has now shown, he, you get 50% today. By the time we get to 2022, you have 20% of Mount Kenya. Would you waste your DP? So that leaves Raila in need of a strong man. And that's how Jimmy Wanjigi comes in. Jimmy Wanjigi is able to do for Raila what Uhuru would not have done in terms of the mountain. One is a businessman. When Raila recently met, met businessmen from the mountain, uh, I think around about the time of Chris, uh, uh, Chris Kirubi's death, they say they want somebody who will guarantee stability, who will guarantee business, and Raila is that man. But to cement that, you need a Wanjigi around Raila. Wanjigi himself brings the experience of business, and therefore the businessmen will see this is the right man. Finally, I believe with his organizational skills, the Kikuyus will be able to buy into a Jimmy Wanjigi presidency, or at the very least, they will allow him to support Raila with their support. That is not far fetched. Neither will it be a wasted time. Because by supporting Raila through Jimmy Wanjigi, Kikuyus will gain two things. One, they will be breaking that notion that they never support anybody else. They will have supported Raila. But, number two, it will be good for them, not just because they will have supported another community, because it will be the surest bet to power. More sure than giving Ruto the presidency. All they will need, because Luos will always remember friends. Luos Watarudisha Mkono. So Jimmy will be assured of the Kikuyu vote when he goes for the president after Raila. He will be assured of the Luo votes, because they never let people down. All he will need is a Joe from the coast for his deputy. And Joe will bring the coastal, the Muslim vote, and it is game shot, and you have President Jimmy Wanjigi after, after President Raila Amolo Dinga.